viewers and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. Time to get started on Project WJ. Uh, today I'm going to install the Iron Rock Off-Road Premium Rock Sliders. So they're just a rocker panel guard that's going to go on under the rocker panel, bolt to the pinch weld, hook to the unibody underneath, hopefully protect it from, you know, rocks, tree stumps, whatever you can come up on that can, you know, smash the heck out of your rocker panels and uh, give you a little protection. So here it is. This is the passenger side one. I've already gone ahead and installed the driver's side. Ran into some problems over there. I think I got them all addressed the best that I could. So we're going to take and install this one, see what kind of issues we run into, you know, see how easy it goes, and see if we can get this baby done. I don't know what the heck they make these things out of. These suckers are heavy. Get it set up there in the lift arms. Now because I have it on the lift, I'm just gonna use the undercar tripods to you know, hold it where we need it. First thing I gotta do is take the two front bolts that hold the bottom half of the fender on, get those out. That way we can kind of get it up there, get it centered, mark our spots, drill the holes. The back side of the uh, rock slider there is already pre-drilled and tapped. They use, uh, looks like some quarter 28 uh, fine thread bolts on that. I think eight or nine of them that go through the pinch welds and hold it onto that. On the unibody, uh, let me grab, actually I got one right here. This is what they want you to use on the unibody. So it's just a self-driller, self-tapper. Uh, you, you know, perhaps it would be strong enough. There's four, eight, 12 of them. I guess it would be, I elected not to use these. Uh, they do go in to the unibody, which is, you know, pretty thin sheet metal. I uh, came up with something a little different to do there. Uh, of course, you know, if you're doing it at home, uh, don't want to spend the extra time. I'm sure these will probably work. Fashion of power tools. Oh, yeah, I think I will. That was easy. It's one thing I did notice. Uh, you, you know, obviously we have the two, you know, holes there, and these were like, yeah, these end up being, they're four and a quarter to center to center. Now I see on the inside of this rock slider, they have two holes, you know, and they're, they're, these are labeled left to right, and that's about the only difference I've seen was hole spacing, uh, you know, just right off hand. But the holes they have in here are about four and a half, so they don't really line up with these. I don't know if they were, you know, intended you know, to line up with those, you know, or, you know, different, you know, the earlier ones, later ones have different hole spacing. And the other thing I noticed, if you attempt to line it up with those holes, the front of the rock slider actually sticks past into the wheel arch. Uh, didn't really think that was, you know, useful direction, say, to center it up, you know, on the pinch weld. So that's what I, you know, what I've done on the other side. You end up having about three eighths of an inch of the pinch weld sticking out the front and about that out the back. So I'm going to take it, stands underneath it get it picked up, get it where we can get underneath it, let it down, find the pre-drilled, pre-tapped holes, you know, mark them, uh, direction say to transfer your mark drill from the outside. I've got a 90 degree drill, I just hit them from the inside, so no big deal. So that's where we're going with it. You can see about three eighths of an inch there, roughly, and then come to the back and about the same. So I figure that's about the best of center I can get. So once you determine, you know, where you want it, uh, I looked at the braces that come out to the unibody, make sure they seem like they're gonna, you know, they're gonna line up in spots that aren't gonna cause any problems, you know, like overlapping, you know, metals. Uh, it seemed to be okay. So I've set it back down. And like I said, they've pre-drilled the holes. So we have to just go through, I'm just gonna take a Sharpie and mark these. And then what they say uh, in the directions is to measure down, you know, from the corner of the lip, they say do it on the outside, but lips in the same spot, measure down three eighths of an inch, you know, draw your mark and then poke your holes through. Now they got you using a five sixteenths drill bit. These are quarter inch holes. I found uh, when I did the other side, it was a little more helpful to have it a little more forgiving. I went to a three eighths 
Uh, didn't seem to cause any problems, but I was having a lot of fitment issues on the other side. I'm probably going to do 3 8 on this side also. So in order to get my 3 8 mark, I just have a piece of 3 8 inch uh, flat stock here. I just held it up here in the corner and then just marked on the bottom of it. That way I don't have to go through the tape measure and hit every one. Like I said, I'm using a 90 degree drill, so get them from underneath is not a big deal. If not, you know, do them from the outside, just transfer your mark over and then start blazing holes. Like I said, on the other side, I ended up going to 3 8 just for that little bit more room for error. So I'm just going to go and touch these up with the 3 8 First bit was a 5 16 so I find if you do that first. Now a lot of guys are going to ask why they didn't hole punch it. Well, these are hyper step bits. Typically they center very well. You just touch them on there. For whatever reason, that 5 16 I don't know if it's getting a little dull, but it was walking a little bit on me. So at this point, whatever you use for metal prep, you know, if you whether you, uh, you know, deeper, you know, deeper the hole, prime it, paint it, whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm using fluid film, lots of it. Uh, just personal preference. I'm going to take and start. If I'm a kid here. I'm just going to start right at the back. Uh, skip, I'm just going to get a little douche in the hole, and then on the bare metal, and then I'm going to raise it up. I'm going to get one of them started. Hopefully. Some light situated here. I think I have it started. All right, so we're not going to suck that one right in. I just want to make sure I have it started. Probably should beat that drain hole in first. Uh, now we're going to just work our way right down the line. Before I do that, one thing I want to do, this is where I got in trouble on the other side. I just went, so we just have the back one in. I'm going to put one of the front ones in. Now this other front one here is kind of tricky because it starts pushing up the corner of the fender. Uh, I have to elongate the fender hole because it does, it does kind of crunch the fender a little bit. Uh, it's just the way the fender is formed and the way these fit. What I want to do is get another front, get a front bolt started, the back bolt started. I want to draw it in, and then I've got to look down the rocker panel here, down the pinch weld. I want to see how much gap is behind it. Now over on the other side, it was hitting perfectly tight in the very front and perfectly tight in the back, but down through here, you know, there was, you know, three eighths of an inch gap. Uh, I checked the tubing, the tubing is perfectly straight. You know, I thought maybe when they welded the outside piece on it might have, you know, bowed it a little bit. It must be just, you know, I'm at 17 years old. I don't know if it's had any body work done to it. And there's gotta be variances, you know, in the you know, five years they've made these things. So that's all I can assume. So what I did in that case is I just stuck little washers behind each bolt just to kind of shim it. Uh, I initially on that side, I tried to uh, tighten it, thinking that it may, you know, fold the pinch weld out. I didn't have good success with that. So I decided just to shim it. I'll show you here in a minute. I'll get uh, get this one lined up and then we'll tighten this up a little bit. That way when we go through and put it in our bolts, if we got to add washers behind them, we can. I 
can't say. Be careful tightening on this impact or this ratchet is very, very weak. I just baby in the baby in the throttle on it. But now that it's you know attached from the rear, you know it's still pretty pretty flexible. We have to uh, you know push it up so it lines up on the unibody. Looks like this side here might only take you know, maybe maybe one washer. This side might be tight enough. Now the other side wasn't. This might be close enough where it's just going to pull in on its own, just that little bit. All right, so I think we're going to be good here. Just a matter of kind of going through. I see I forgot to drill one hole, so I'm going to take the sucker back off. <laughs> Dummy, didn't see my own marks. And then this hole here, it looks like I've got to wallow up just a tiny bit. Uh, but I've got to take it back off to elongate the hole in the fender a smidge anyways. Just use a round file. Material is pretty thin. You know, hit it a couple times, you can kind of get the hole where you need it. I'm just going to take and bring it back up front and rear, get things lined back up, see if I can go through and start getting bolts started. Like I said, I found it's easier if I start just on one end, the way you kind of up and down and tweak it. And, um, you know, the biggest thing I found is, you know, the fasteners are small, they're fine thread, they strip easy or they could strip easy, you know, you're going into quarter inch, I think it looks like quarter inch wall thickness, you know, tubing, so don't force it. That's what I would say as you're going along, you know, just leave them loose until you've got everything kind of, whoops, jockeyed around. <clears throat> don't have a thread, probably should have thread chased these. Uh, if you don't have a thread chaser, maybe get a spare, you know, quarter 20 bolt and prior to sticking it up, you know, go run it through every hole just to be sure. I thought I had that one, sir, but it didn't. So I'm just going to fiddle with these, really not much to see. And I see just jostling around, making 100% sure you've got them straight. So now that I've got them all started uh, by hand, give them a thorough douching of the fluid film, uh, I'm going to go through and just draw them up evenly. I'm going to pay close attention to make sure that I'm, you know, that they are drawn into the pinch well. Like I say, this other side, I had to, I had to shim it. It was quite a, quite a distance. feel a little more comfortable going through and finishing them off by hand here. So this pinch weld was within, I would say like a washer's thickness. So I see no need to shim this side. See if I can show you the driver's side here. So on the driver's side, you can see, hopefully we get, uh, get the right lighting here for you. You can see where it meets the pinch weld there was perfectly tight. All right, and then we come to the back and then up there, it was perfectly tight. But as it progressed down through, you know, you're not gonna flex this tube. Plus, you can see the gap 
right uh, right there that I had to make up. So it's about three washers. You know, it's you know it's better than three eighths of an inch. Uh, I knew that it wasn't going to push that pinch weld over that far, and it kind of kept that same trajectory all the way down through the driver's side until you got up to about the front two bolts and then up there it fit pretty flush you know here I used two washers and prior to doing that uh, what I had done set my light down uh, I took a pair of c-channel vice grips you know and clipped it on the tube on a pinch washer you know made sure it was pushed over as tight as, tight as it could but being that it was hitting up front and you know hitting flush in the rear you know there was no way I was gonna suck this arc out of it which you know I you know is in the body because like I said I did check the tube for flatness and the tube's flat uh, and then on the on the contrary I guess when we did the driver's side you know coming down through here uh, let's see you know you can see this side was pretty flush all the way down you know straight down through there you know it was like a washer's thickness away now that pinch weld's flexible enough that when you draw it down it you know it sandwiches in there so no big deal you know this one fit you know nice and flush all the way so just to give you kind of an idea you know what uh, you know what was happening you know over here when I did this side so it was a little bit frustrating to you know get it all lined up and then of course with you know and I don't know where the discrepancy is you know if this is you know pushed out it doesn't appear to have had any body work done to it you know that I could see you know the seam sealer and everything is all still factory I don't know you know it's hard to say and then what ultimately ended up happening is I ended up having to shim behind you know these pieces that bolt to the frame or bolt to the unibody uh, ended up shimming behind this one uh, with a piece of like 7 gauge and then used a piece of like 3 16 behind that one because there's just no way you know you just can't draw it in uh, this bar is, is too thick you know you're not gonna bend it you're just gonna end up doing you know damage now the front one there I did not have to use any shim on so I'll give you kind of an idea and that is the area in which they want you to use uh, the zip screws these ones look like they're a heck of a lot closer I think once we push this up make our holes I don't think we're gonna need any shims on these ones but from a manufacturing standpoint it's got to be it's got to be a disaster to build these things because you know let's say when they make this Jeep you know 99 to 04 you know using the same tooling and stuff if they're tooling making the Jeep is off you know a sixteenth of an inch eighth of an inch something like that whatever they mocked their you know uh, rock slider off from you know it's gonna vary from vehicle to vehicle so I, I really don't blame you know the manufacturer you know Iron Rock off-road for this it's just it's going to be different from Jeep to Jeep so I would say if you're if you're going in and modifying your Jeep be prepared you could probably see that you know this the frame support brace initially was hanging down a little bit I assume it's because the pinch weld is tweaked out a little bit just stuck the jack under it pushed it up now these do fit a hundred times nicer than it did on the other side which you know you guys have seen at this point this is where you're supposed to use the self-drilling screws you know put them through snug them up and that's it uh, sheet metal here uh, oh, was maybe 16 something like that some of it's doubled through here the you know if you're doing this at home this will likely work uh, you know I don't doubt it there's four on each one if you're using these be careful they will they will strip pretty easily you can over tighten them so you can elect to do this what I've done is I just went up I grabbed a bunch of uh, you know quarter inch uh, quarter 20 bolts I'm gonna go through just drill these out there's lots of holes in the frame and what I use is my one flexi magnet and I just stick this on the end of it I fish them up through throw a flat washer on it throw a nut on it jam them down now where this would cause a problem is in the future if I ever want to take these off getting the nuts back off them would be a disaster as far as if you're just trying to use conventional methods what I would use I would just take the torch and psh, psh, you know blow the heads off them I don't foresee having to take these off anytime soon so this is what I'm going to use you can get a piece of fish wire if you want you know fish it through thread the bolt in you know fish it and pull it up through honestly I was doing pretty good with the magnet I believe I think it was this this rear one yeah the, or this middle one was the hardest one to do but it was it, it's not overly difficult so I'm going to keep this here go through punch these holes get this one tightened up 
the other two are already up above the frame. This is the only one uh, on the other side that I had to put, you know, flush with the bottom of the frame. The other two sit up maybe quarter inch, something like that. So I'm using a 1764 drill bit. It's one size above quarter inch. It just makes it easier to fish them through the hole. And then I just use their holes as a guide. It's nice to be able to get one, one up in there and then take and, so I shine a light up through the hole. I like I said, I like to get one up in there, take and get it tightened up and then get your jack out of the way. Makes it a little bit easier, but yeah, you can see, you can see through there. And once I get, uh, get the bend on my little magnet just right, it's really not too overly difficult. it started and then it pops right through just like that and then I just keep my magnet in there grab the nut and that's pretty much it let's see I guess let's go upstairs and grab some more but at this point you can just you know get get longer ones make sure they're threaded all the way just kind of hold it and if you're using you know if you've done this long enough you know you just whack this with an impact and it will draw down and friction will hold it Sometimes if you bring it back, just push on the washer a little bit with one finger and then tighten up the nut with the other. And then once you get the end of the nut exposed, you can grab the end of the nut with, uh, you know, grab it here with a pair of needle nose vice grips and then just tighten it up with a wrench if you want. Like I say, the only downside is taking these back off. It's, you know, cut off wheel, cut and torch, you know, something like that. You're going to have to, you know, go at it. Lucky one more time here. Well, we gotta get lucky quite a few more times, but let's see. Oh, I don't put enough bend in it. I'll have to look on Amazon, see if I can find a link to these flexi magnets. They're super handy. I get these ones off the Mack truck. There it is. Like I say, for fishing bolts. It's one of my favorite tools. Give them a little toot. Well, they should, hopefully. Whoa, crap. Oh, that's gonna get them to catch, and then you're good to go. We'll just hold that flat washer. like that. And then like I said, if you're using longer bolts, uh, or bolts even like this, like I say, just grab it with a pair of vice grips here on the end, and then you can wrench it on. And then usually what, what I'll do, or what I did in this case, so I didn't have long bolts sticking on, I just stick cut off wheel, just, you know, nick them off on the end so they're, you know, not hanging way out. I guess I can demonstrate that for you. Because this is how I finish setting them up, because that impact's actually pretty weak. So you just need on those vice grips, yeah, it boogers up the threads, but it really doesn't matter. And then, it's kind of awkward. Work around the camera and the lift and everything. And then we can get back behind it. You know, snug it up. A lot of times you don't even need to hold them. You just, you know, grab them with the box end or whatever. Just watch the bolt, make sure it doesn't spin on you. And then you can just snug it up. And now I can get my jack out of the way and just finish them. And essentially, that's how I'm going to do all of the rest of them. There was one little thing on the front. The, the part of the unibody is actually inside. There's another unibody. So in the front, I could not use the upper hole. I had to drill a hole 
kind of in between, you know, to utilize this method. Otherwise, uh, what happens is you end up drilling a top hole and then you can't fish anything through it because it's inside of another cavity inside the unibody. So the back one's really easy. I already did that. The back one actually has a, a hole just like this right behind it so you can literally reach up through and you know push them through. Now if, on the front here if you reach up in this hole you'll see that I only go one knuckle deep. If you come around here you go up one knuckle you know make an imaginary line across the top of my finger so like right through here is that other inside structure. Like I say you could if you wanted to I mean you could actually measure it with something some kind of measuring device go through so right up at the tip of that which happens to be you know just about at the bottom of this hole if you're using the zip screws fine just you know wham bam bino you're done I'm gonna drill a hole here here and then just about halfway in between do another hole that way I can fish you know through here now this is the hardest one to fish through if I had fish wire it'd be a piece of cake because I could stick them up through thread my bolt on and, and pull it unfortunately I the smallest I have here is half inch. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't know if it's necessary to have four bolts. You know, if two would be satisfactory or, you know, drill out just two in the middle and put three eighths bolts in there. But uh, this is the method we're going with. bolts are through and tight gonna go through a little cough wheel just trim the ends off them just touch them up a little bit with the grinder Sawzall might work a little better in that situation, but I'll just show you how I'm going to finish them off. Um, I just got a little two-inch grinder. I'll just go up and touch the heads on them a little bit. And that's pretty much it. It's just cosmetic. Anyways, I mean, you could leave them long. It really doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm just going to go through and do that on all the rest of them. So you know the process. And then we're just going to sit it down and admire it. And here we are, finished product, all done. Sprayed a little fluid film on them, just went through, made sure they were all snugged up. I think I was telling you guys about this rear one that, you know, you can easily get the bolts in, you know, up through this hole. And then you guys saw me fish the ones in, you know, through this hole here. I suppose it probably wouldn't hurt, you know, even if you were to, you know, you know make another access hole there. But uh, the front one's the trickiest just because I used the existing hole. You know to get in it but that's it give it a big grand tour stick out just a smidge past the tire with the factory wheels on it sure would like to know what's up with this uh, driver's side but obstacles were easily overcome So yeah, that's that, Iron Rock Off-Road Premium Rock Sliders. Folks, that's it. I've got real work to do tomorrow, so I gotta get this thing outside. Go home, get rested up, do all that. And so hopefully you enjoyed it. I know it's kind of a short video without a whole lot of stuff in it, but I didn't want to show you drilling every single hole and screwing in every single bolt because it gets kind of repetitious, but you get the overall idea on how these go on, how they fit. A couple things, you know, a couple problems I ran across which hopefully somebody can benefit from. 
if you got these for your Jeep and like, uh, you know, wait a minute, I've got this, you know, quarter inch gap here or whatever, then, you know, this was, this was my solution. You know, I've just got a bunch of, you know, these are two and a half by two, that's the size of their square. Uh, I've got some various thicknesses, you know, about three different thicknesses here, uh, you know, that I cut out. So depending on what kind of gap I needed to make up for whatever reason, uh, I do not believe it was in the manufacturing of the rock sliders themselves, just from looking at it, taking measurements, comparing them side to side. I believe it's just, you know, something about the Jeep. It's a Jeep thing. I don't understand. <laughs> and we'll leave it at that. Overall, the driver, the passenger side, you know, uh, in my opinion, fit really well. You do have to do some tweaking and shifting around and stuff, but I guess that's to be expected. Uh, so we'll leave it at that. Leave your questions, comments, criticisms in the comment box below. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't, but make sure you tell us why. Find us around socials, Patreon, all that business. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.